All right, so we are in section um, 10.4. And we're talking about the law of signs. So far, when we've worked with trigonometry, when we've done Sokotoa, sine, cosine, tangent, we've always had a right triangle. One of our angles was a 90 degree angle. So to use Sokotoa to do the stuff we've done so far, we had to have a 90 degree angle in our triangle. The law of signs gives us a way to work with triangles that don't have a 90 degree angle, that aren't right triangles. So first off, we are going to draw our triangle and talk about how we, how we label the sides and the angles. So we're going to call this triangle ABC. And we use capital letters. The normal way that we're going to label triangles, we use capital letters for the angles. Angle A, angle B, angle C. And we use small letters for the sides. And the letters for the sides go opposite the angle. So this side would be small b, this side would be small c, and this side would be small a. So this is how we're always going to label triangles. Capital letters for angles small letters opposite them for the sides. The law of signs works for any triangle. And we have sides small a, small b, small c. We get these really, really nice equations. Um, let's put the electronics away, please. So we have any triangle ABC with sides A, B, and C. Law of sines gives us these equations. Sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And this is true for any triangle. And the way we come up with the law of sines is if I drew in the height of this triangle, you would divide it into two right triangles. <coughs> and I could use the trigonometry that we've talked about so far on the tr right triangle on this side, and the trigonometry that we've talked about so far on the right triangle on this side. The height is the same, so that's where the equations come from. I get an equation from one side of the triangle, an equation from the other side of the triangle, and the heights have to be the same. So that's where all the equations come from. So a couple of important things about the law of sines. One is how we're labeling our triangles. Capital letters for angles, small letters across for the sides. And we get these equations. This gives us three different equations. So I can break this up into three equations. We have sine A over A equals sine B over B. Sine A over A equals sine C over C. And sine B over B equals sine C over C. The law of sines gives us three, these, all three of these equations to work with. And we just put these equal signs in between here to kind of make a shorthand for those three. So this is the law of sines. This is what we're going to be <coughs> using. And these three equations, we're going to pick and choose these equations depending on how our triangle is set up. The questions on the equations, what the law of sines is telling us. All right, what we're going to use the law of sines for is what we call solving triangles.
And what solving triangles means is find all the missing parts. So if the problem tells you solve, solve this triangle, it's telling you to find the missing parts. We use the law of sines for two different kinds of triangles. <coughs> One is for an angle side angle or angle angle side. So what we're talking about here is when we know two angles on one side. So that's one kind of triangle that we can use a lot of sides on. And the second kind is a side-side angle triangle. And this is when we have two sides and an angle opposite one. And I'm just going to put a little star here. And we're going to talk about the side-side angle right at the end because something, something special happens with the side-side angle. Because remember back when we talked about finding, when we talked about showing that triangles were congruent, what do we say about side-side angle for congruent triangles? What was it, Preston? doesn't work. So we said side-side angle doesn't work to show that triangles are congruent. So that means something special happens when we're using law of sines. So we'll talk about that at the very end. All right. So these are, these are the cases when we use the law of sines. Angle side angle, angle angle side. We know two angles in one side of the triangle. Or side side angle. We know two sides and our angle is opposite one. So what I want to do is just do a couple of examples using law of sines. Law of sines is not a difficult thing to use. The formulas are easy. Uh, the, the math turns out to usually turns out pretty easy. So we just have to set them up and follow the equations. So let's look at a couple of examples of solving the solving triangle. So here is our triangle. And this is going to be triangle ABC. And we know that side A is 3. This is side C, side B. Angle A is 25 degrees and angle B is 70 degrees. And we want, we want B, small b, and small c. <clears throat> Alright, so our triangle, we have an angle, angle side. We know we have angle, angle side. So we know we can use law of sines. So let's set up, we're going to use the sides of our, our triangles to set up our equations. Let's find b first, because we have angle b and we're looking for side B. We know angle A and side A. So I'm going to set up my equation with angle A and side A. I'm going to say that the sine of 25 degrees over side A, 3, equals sine of 70 degrees over B is what we're looking for. So there's my equation. How do we solve equations like this? We could, so I could, I could do two ways. We do the same process. So if we could plug the sine of 25 into our calculator, sine of 70 in our calculator, come up with a decimal for those numbers. That's fine. If you do that, make sure you keep at least four decimal places. So don't round your number off to like sine don't round this off to 0.6, whatever comes up. Use four decimal places. With the law of signs, if you round your numbers up too early, your answers come out to be way, way off at the end. 
once we we could do it that way what we're doing then the process that we're doing is we cross multiply I'm going to cross multiply here and I'm going to say B times the sine of 25 degrees equals 3 times sine 70 degrees. So you could write these as decimals, these are just numbers. I'm going to keep, keep them the way they are and do the calculation at the end. Now to get uh, B by itself, what do I do? Divide by sine of 25. This is just a number. If you turn it into a decimal, this would just be a decimal. So I have B over sine B sine 25 over sine 25 is 3 sine 70 over sine 25. These cancel. So I get B equals 3 times the sine of 70 degrees divided by the sine of 25. If you turned them into decimals already, these would all just be decibels and you could calculate it out. I'm going to plug this. I like to do it this way and do all the calculation at the end. I'm going to plug this into my calculator, just like it is. So let's take a look at that. Um, so I'm going to do 3 times sine of 70 divided by the sine of 25. And I get 6.67. And I would do the same thing if I had if this was a decimal, I just multiply three times that decimal and divide by whatever decimal I get here. So my answer is 6.67. So B equals 6.67. figure that out. All right, now we need to find side C. So we'll do that over here. Yes. So then you should you should have a button on your calculator, like a change button or a button that looks like arrows that look like this, just hit that, hit that and it'll change it to a decimal. Or if you can't figure it out now, I can show you how to do that later, to turn that into a decimal. So it's, your calculator is giving you an exact answer rather than a, a, a rounded answer. Alright, so let's find side C here. Well, the law of sign says I need angle C and side C to make my equation. How can I find angle C? How can I find this angle? All of the angles in my triangle have to add up to 180. So I can get angle C is 180 minus 25 minus 7. So I'm adding these up and subtracting them from 180, or just subtracting all the angles from 180. Uh, this comes out to be 85 degrees. So we found that. That's 85 degrees. All three of these add up to 180. So now I can write another equation. I can say sine of 85 degrees over side C, which is what we're looking for equals, and I'll use A, 25 degrees and 3 again. Yes? Um, so, I, uh, the law of sine says the sine of the angle divided by the side opposite. So I looked at the triangle and I said, I know angle A and I know side A. So I'm going to use that for one part of my equation. For here, for this one, I know I'm looking for side B and I have angle B. So I did sine of angle B divided by that side B. So I'm looking for ones that I have all the parts for first and setting up the equation with that. So that's going to be one side because we know all of that stuff. So I knew everything for, for a, angle A and side A, so I set that up for one side of my equation. 
And then the other one I said, let's look for side B. So that's so we did that. Pick that angle on that side. The side is opposite the angle. So side A is opposite angle A. So these are across from each other. And now we're going to solve this, solve this just like we did this one. We'll cross multiply. So I get three times sine 85 degrees equals C times sine 25 degrees. Divide both sides by sine 25 degrees. And I get C equals 3 sine 85 degrees over sine 25 degrees. Plug that into my calculator just like I did before. Or you could turn them into decimals right here and keep them as decimals, work with, the, work with them in the problem that way. When I calculate this out, I get C equals um, about 7.1. So B equals 6.67, and C equals 7.1, and we have our entire, we've solved our triangle. So this is 7.1. So we found all the missing parts. So we know every side and every angle. Here. Questions on that example? All right, let's look at one more. In this one, we're going to find an angle rather than finding a, finding a side. So our, our triangles don't always have to be A, B, and C. We could label them any, any way we want. But the idea is the same. So side X is 25, side Y is 30, and angle Y is 45 degrees. And for this one, we want to find the measure of angle X. So let's, set, let's use our law of signs. We have a side-side angle triangle. We know two sides and one angle. The angle is opposite one of them. So let's, let's set up our, our sides. We know we're finding, we want to find the measure of angle X. So part of our equation has to involve angle X. So I'm going to say sine of angle x over side x, which is 25, equals, and then I'm going to pick the other the others that we know the whole part, the whole part piece of the law of sines. I have angle y and I have side y. So I'm going to say sine of 45 over 30. We know that angle and that side, so we know that whole part. We're looking for angle x, so we use sine of angle x and side x for the other part. Now how are we going to get, we, we have to get angle x, so what are we going to do to solve, to solve this one? Multiply both sides by 25. So these, 25 divided by 25 is just 1. So I get sine of angle x equals 25 times sine of 45 degrees over 30. And I'll plug this into my calculator just like this. So let me go to the calculator. I'm going to do 25 times um, sine of 45 divided by 
30. And I get 0.5893. So sine x equals 0.5893. Now, when we're calculating, we definitely want to keep four decimal places. So I wouldn't round this, I wouldn't round this to 0.59. You want to keep four decimal places, definitely wouldn't round it to 0 0.6. Keep, keep four decimal places, 0.589 would probably be okay, but your angle would come out quite a bit off if you rounded this to 0 0.6. Now we, we have the sine of x, yeah? Um, what I did is, I did it all together. I did 25 times sine 45 divided by 30. But you could do it the other way also. I could do 25 times the sine of 45. They get a number for that, 180 points. Uh, oops, I did 255. 25 times sine of 45 is 17.67 and then divide that by 30 and that's that should give me the same thing 0.5893 you can do it either way all right so we have we have the sign of our angle and we want to find the angle so what do we have to do if we're looking for an angle what do we have to use Inverse x equals the inverse sine of 0.5893. Plug that in the calculator. We saw yesterday when we did the whiteboards. I know everybody knows how to do this now. x equals inverse sine of this comes out to be about 36 degrees. So when we're looking for an angle, we always have to use an inverse. questions on that example? Now if the problem would have asked us, we could have, now we found angle X, so this is 36 degrees, we could find angle Z, because all of our angles have to add up to 180, and then we could find side Z using the law of sine. So if, that if we would have been asked to do it, we could have found the other pieces of the triangle. We just had to find the one angle. All right, really quickly, I want to talk about what happens with side-side angle triangles sometimes. This is called the ambiguous case. You will do more with the ambiguous case in Algebra 2, and you'll do quite a bit of, with the ambiguous case in pre-calculus. But what happens is with side-side angle triangles, we, we talked about finding, deciding if angles, triangles were congruent, that we couldn't use side-side angle to show the triangles were congruent. What can happen is if, if the side opposite the angle is shorter so if it's shorter than the other side we can get two triangles so what happens is we have a triangle that looks something like this We know this angle, there's theta, and we'll call that A and B. B is shorter than A. So what happens is, I could swing this side around, and we did something like this before, and I can connect that side up with the base of the triangle, 
in a different place. So this angle is the same, this side's the same, and this side's the same, but I have two different triangles. So if this side is shorter than the, if side B is shorter than side A, I end up with the ambiguous case, where I can end up with two different triangles that would answer, that would be a solution to my problem. So what you'll do in the future is you'll have to figure out, do I have an ambiguous case? And if so, then you have to find all the pieces for two different triangles. So I just wanted to let you know that the ambiguous case, there is such a thing as the ambiguous case, and in the future you will have to do more work figuring out whether or not that, that you have it, and so we don't have to worry about that. It, it takes takes a little bit, you have, there's some rules of how you figure out if you have an ambiguous case, and then you have to basically have to solve the problem twice to find two different, because this angle is going to be different, and this length of this side will be different. So you have two triangles that come out to be the answer to your question. So I just want you to know that that exists, so when you see it again, it won't be the first time you look for it. All right, any questions? Bob signs, easy equations, problems are usually pretty easy to set up, so hopefully it's not, uh, not shouldn't be some, shouldn't be anything that's really too, too, too tough.